Hey guys, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my little motherhood channel where I take care of all things mom. In today's video, I thought I would do kind of like an all things fall. I have a fun little fall like activity, more like Halloween for the kids. And then two fall recipes, as well as kind of highlighting some of the decorations around here. So I'm excited to show you guys all that and uh, let's just get into it. So first up, we have a fun DIY kid activity that was inspired by something I saw on TikTok. We are going to be making little ghosts that fly using recycled hotel paper cups, rubber bands, napkins, and a marker. All stuff I already had at home. I also used a pair of scissors and some hot glue to assemble these ghosts. To make one flying ghost, you will need two identical paper cups, or at least identical in size, one for the ghost and one to send the ghost flying. The first thing you are going to do is cut your rubber band and then poke two holes across from each other about a centimeter down from the lid of one cup. Once the holes have been created, feed the rubber band through both of the holes and tie knots on the outside of the cup so that the rubber band is tight but not overly stretched. If your rubber band is too loose, the ghost won't fly as high. I used a relatively thick rubber band, but if you only have skinny ones, you might want to repeat this process so that you have two rubber bands that form a cross. Then it is time to decorate. If you want, you could use white paper here that might be more sturdy, but I just hot glued a white napkin to the cup so that it covered the entire cup and then cut off the excess. I placed hot glue at the base of the cup and up around the top of the cup as well to secure the napkin in place. In some places, I had to glue the napkin to itself so that it didn't stick out too much. Finally, I finished off the ghost by taking a sharpie and drawing two eyes and a mouth on the napkin and that was it. To make the ghost fly, you simply stack the ghost cup on top of the spare cup Press down, stretching the rubber band and making sure to hold the cup at the base, and then let go and watch the cup fly. Obviously, just watching me play with the cups is boring, so let's get Aubrey in here and see the joy that she brings. Look, they're little ghosts! They're little ghosts? Say, ooh! ooh. <laughs> and then we're going to watch the ghost fly. Ready? Go! Woo! Can you make your ghost fly? Push it all the way down. Hold it at the bottom. Go. Woo! I want mommy's ghost. You want mommy's ghost? Okay. We'll switch. One, two, woo! <laughs> Go pick up your ghost. Uh oh. Oh, some of the ghost fell off. So, obviously, using napkins, you're going to have some of the napkin peel off. You can go ahead and cover this in paper if you want instead of a napkin, but I was just kind of working with things we've kept from hotels and like grocery shopping, buying asparagus. So really you can make this with a lot of like leftover stuff, but if you are afraid about, you know, any, any ripping, just beware. You might have to do some repairs here and there. Go. <laughs> Choose it over here. Okay. Oh, that was a little jump, huh? Ooh. I got a happy one. Mm-hmm. And I got the spooky one. Ooh. 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 Whoa! That was a big jump. You can make it better? Yeah.
Moving on, let's check out my two fall recipes. I am starting off by making some coffee cake because you can't have fall without some delicious cinnamon sugar swirled bread. Months ago, I shared the short and sweet recipe video, so I will link that video up above in the cards and down below in the description box for your convenience if you want to make this for yourself. Next up, we have toffee, or what some people like to call Christmas crack, but in this case, I'm making it Halloween themed for a Tesla party we will be attending soon. This recipe is so easy to make and pretty much loved by all who try it. This was my first time using parchment paper instead of foil to line the pan, and I have to say I'm not going back. The cleanup was so much easier to deal with, and there is a lot less waste. To get the parchment paper to better form to the pan, 
I did spray the corners of the pan with some cooking spray and that seemed to help a bit. I decided to make a double batch this day because I knew my family would want to have some too. I can't tell if you're here or you're out there. Do you want to be out there? You don't need to be Prince Charming to me. I just need this to be real. I don't need no fairy tale. You don't need a kill. Dragon for me. To make the toffee Halloween themed, my initial intention was to add green, purple, and orange sprinkles to the top once the chocolate had melted. I couldn't find any, but I also thought eyeball sprinkles would have been fun to add too. I ended up using some of the sprinkles that came in this fun pack from Smart and Final. We had picked up these cookies and frosting packs to entertain some of the kids in our family at one of our little gatherings. The cookies weren't super soft, but overall they tasted good with the frosting. Anyways, in addition to these sprinkles, I added some orange ones that I had on hand. These were different shapes and textures and definitely added a different element to the look of the toffee. I let the toffee firm up in the freezer until I had time to break it and package it up, which ended up being a day or two later. Let's move on to some of the fall decorations we have around the house. On the front patio, my mom displays a few DIY pumpkins she made a number of years ago. She just took old cans, washed them, spray painted them orange, and used a hammer and nail to punch out holes to create a jack-o'-lantern design. She finished off the pumpkins by adding a green wire as a handle and added some vine-like twists in the handle as well. I think these look cute as is, but you could always fill them with fake or real candles or flowers. Next up, we have these little clip-on pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. These are great to add to things around the house, and in this case, I thought I would touch up the little hand towel basket in our bathroom by clipping them onto the handles. But you could always clip them onto the towels themselves or other things around the place that you're choosing to decorate. Before I move on to the next decoration, I'd like to thank 3dcrystal.com for sponsoring this portion of today's video. 3dcrystal.com is operated by university students who make laser etched photos inside crystals. They created this crystal for us using a photo we recently took at my cousin's wedding. I love how it appears three-dimensional and it actually reminds me of some of the holograms you would see in the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland which is one of the reasons why I'm including it in this video. I will link all of the information down below, as well as the company's YouTube channel, if you would like to find out more information on how to get one of these made for you or a loved one, especially with the holidays coming up. Again, I'd like to thank 3dcrystal.com for sponsoring this portion of today's video and for the amazing display of such a fun memory of ours. Another decoration at my mom's house is actually something that my siblings and I made years ago. These are little brown paper bags made to look like jack-o'-lanterns. When we were little, we painted the bags, filled them with scrap paper, or I don't know, but scrap paper makes the most sense without opening them up, and tied them off with some twine and cut out little faces. 
This would make for a fun and easy activity for the kiddos, and I may even do this with Aubrey in the coming weeks. Finally, another fun DIY Halloween decoration that my mom made years ago is this milk carton skeleton. I don't have the exact instructions she used at the time, but there are plenty online and I will link one below in the description box in case you want to recreate this with your kiddos. I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it provided some inspiration, whether in the kitchen, with your kids, or around the house. If it did, would you mind hitting that like button? It really helps out my channel. And subscribe if you guys are new. I would love to have you stick around, and I will catch you in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.